this perspective article, we highlighted a phenomenon that we call the flexibilization of science. The term flexibilization described in our article refers to a methodological loosening in the development of low quality studies leading to the production of unreliable data and later in the cycle, the production of anecdotal evidence. Hi, I'm here to provide an overview of our manuscript recently published in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings on how the loosening of methodological standards driven by cognitive biases is weakening the evidence produced during the COVID-19 pandemic. My name is Lucas Silva. I'm a physician and currently a research fellow in the Department of Emergency Medicine at the Mayo Clinic Rochester. I'm also pursuing a master's degree uh, in the Mayo Clinic Center for Clinical and Translational Science. Several studies, published studies are being uh, retracted and uh, scrutinized because of concerns about their methodological strategies. And we are often seeing early adoption of interventions by policymakers and clinicians based on this kind of studies. And for low quality studies, we refer to studies that uh, ignore the outstanding progress that science and clinical research have accomplished to create rigorous methodological standards. For example, the performance of well-designed randomized control trials rather than retrospective observational studies to evaluate the efficacy of therapeutic drugs. And we have learned from uh, several examples in the medical literature that we need to be extremely careful before early adoption of certain interventions based on low quality evidence. And we believe these early adoptions were triggered by a genuine urge for fighting a disease that had an enormous impact worldwide. And we also think that the persistent belief that such interventions uh, work, even in face of evidence de denying their efficacy, may be explained by cognitive biases such as the confirmation bias, for example, when we have an inclination to search for evidence that confirms our prior beliefs. And we seem to be naturally prone to this sort of intellectual ambush, and there's actually evidence to support that scientists are not immune to this type of systematic error. But why is the creation of low quality evidence and early adoption having such a large impact in current COVID-19 crisis? Because this is creating a scenario in which anecdotal evidence is constantly emerging. For example, several countries have endorsed the use of hydroxychloroquine for COVID-19 in clinical scenarios outside of the clinical research protocols. In Brazil, for example, my home country, the Ministry of Health release a guideline recommending the use of the drug for patients with mild symptoms in the outpatient setting, despite absolutely no convincing evidence behind such recommendation. And this widespread off-label use actually allows for claims of efficacy based on informal reports of patients who recover from the disease after taking the medication, which adds even more confusion and misinterpretation from the public. And this is even more uh, and especially common to emerge from the mild spectrum of COVID-19 in which the drug efficacy is easily confounded with the natural course of the disease that would otherwise improve uh, with supportive care only. In our article, uh, we also describe some of the reasons why anecdotal evidence, despite being the lowest quality of scientific proof, seems to be an optimal tool to fog our search for what really works. There is a narrative quality to anecdotal evidence that resonates with our intuitive patterns of learning. And also the context in which this sort of information is shared usually involves someone we know, so a non-person, which might add an effective balance to the message. And finally, there is the availability heuristics in which people misjudge the pr probability of an event being true based on how easily it can be recalled. So in summary, we believe there is a cycle moved by cognitive biases through all steps in which the expectation for treatment lead to the flexibilization of science, which in its turn generates low quality evidence and early adoption of interventions. With these early adoptions contributing to a large amount of anecdotal evidence that feedbacks the public expectation for treatment. Our goal with this perspective was to emphasize the importance of interrupting the flexibilization of science. It's up to us, clinicians and scientists, to break the cycle. 
And while fast-paced clinical studies need to be done during a global crisis, the pandemic should not be an excuse to overlook important aspects of methodological standards. In a time urging for cost-effective results, we think it's very important to make a clear distinction between the scientific method and scientists. Science is the enterprise that aims to diminish systematic errors, while scientists are reasonably susceptible for all sorts of biases when not following a systematic approach. With this in mind, we, clinicians and scientists, need to be even more vigilant about our own cognitive biases and avoid the flexibilization of science in order to mitigate harms to our society. Thank you very much for your time and I hope you enjoy our article. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter more information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.